Hey, well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, isn't it wonderful to come together this morning on this glorious sunny day to celebrate Easter, to celebrate our Lord has risen? Isn't that amazing? So a very warm welcome to everybody, uh, especially a very warm welcome to all those who are joining us online. Um, and yeah, we're just so pleased that we can all gather together to worship on this glorious day. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Wonderful. So we are going to begin with worship. Um, going to be led in worship now and then after that we'll light the paschal candle and say our prayers so over to Stephen shall we all stand I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled Die for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears. They laid him down. In Joseph's tomb, the entrance seal by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the Oh, praise. 
special Sunday um, of the year. I love Easter Sunday. It's so wonderful to be able to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the hope that brings for all, for everybody. Um, But today it's a really special Easter Sunday as well because it'll be the last one uh, that Chris and I are here, and particularly for Chris, serving Um, as vicar and so as we come to this next part of the service where we're going to light the paschal candle I'm going to invite Chris out to light the candle as I say the prayer so out you come Chris (laughs) Chris is going to be preaching and sharing communion as well later but first of all the paschal candle I feel I feel I should be wearing my shorts (laughs) yeah and and little sort of uh, Clark sandals (laughs) Right, here we go. There's probably some words, aren't there? But I'll yes, let I'll you say, say those. Okay. Like <laughs> this just goes to show. This this is when you discover which theological college your vicar went to. Are they able to light candles? <laughs> It wasn't a big. No, it wasn't a right. big. It wasn't a big tradition at St John's, I have to say. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. So may the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So let's pray together. Faithful one, whose word is life. Come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So now we're just going to take a few moments to bring those things before our Lord that we want to say sorry for, that we want to be forgiven for. So let's just spend a moment or so bringing those things to mind. And then I will lead us in the prayers of penitence. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the Lord of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. 
heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and weakness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So now Jill is going to bring us our first reading. Our first New Testament reading today is taken from Acts, chapter 10, reading verses 34 to 43, and this can be found on page 1004 in the Church Bibles. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses to everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and of the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. I invite us all to stand as we sing that glorious um, Easter hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today.
Well, thank you. Um, Jill's going to bring our second reading now before Chris speaks. Our second New Testament reading is taken from Luke chapter 4, chapter 24. Sorry, I do apologise. Reading from verses 1 to 12. And this can be found on page 1061 on the Pew Bibles. On the first day of the week, every very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on that third day, be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the woman, because their words seemed like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sorry, that's better. Well, happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. It's lovely to be here on this glorious Easter morning, isn't it? Uh, yeah, there were a few here at uh, half past eight. Uh, I was actually up at about half past six, and I, the, the, the sun was over uh, just coming up. Well, it had been up a while, uh, but the, the back of the church was in darkness, but the the, the top of the church was bathed in this glorious sunlight and it just really reminded me of the sort of the tomb uh, and the sunlight streaming into the, the tomb that had been burst open and the stone rolled away. Just uh, I posted it on our Facebook page so if you're a Facebook user then, then do look it up. Now, just pop down here. One of my favourite board games is Cluedo. Who's a Cluedo fan over the years. Look, nearly all the hands have gone up. Even at breakfast at nine, which I shared with them about, with this as well, uh, there were quite a few hands actually. I'm glad to say that not only my children, but my grandchildren uh, are great fans of Cluedo too. And I learnt from a very early age that you can't solve a mystery until you've eliminated all the possibilities. I'm surprised Bev Probert isn't nodding at this stage. <laughs> Was it Miss Peacock with the lead piping in the conservatory? No, someone that's already got that clue and they've shared it with you so prove that it wasn't. Was it the Reverend Tebbett or Reverend Green, I should say, Reverend Green in the library with the spanner? No, someone ha can reveal that you, they've eliminated Reverend Green. Eventually, when you've eliminated all possibilities, you can, with confidence, present your evidence and close the case. And the same is true, I think, for the resurrection. When I first heard the gospel, I thought, gosh, how could this happen? And over the years, at each Easter, 
I have to say, as I've meditated on these words from the Gospels, another piece of the evidence of the jigsaw seems to fall into place. But trying to convince that sceptical non-believer that a man would willingly die on a cross for you and for me, and in fact for all people, and that by doing so he would open up a pathway that we might live with God forever, is a pretty tall order, isn't it? And then convincing that sceptical person to accept that the same person who died also came back to life is an even more difficult concept to get our heads around. Now, we've all heard stories of people giving up their lives sacrificially for others. And lots of war films, I think, there's quite a number of war films that we could reel off now, uh, really you know, tell that story. But for that person to come back who's given up their life and retell the story in person, that just seems unbelievable. But this year, I've been pondering a particular piece of evidence that has convinced me along with all the other evidence that the resurrection is indeed true. And it's all to do with the folded grave clothes. You all know that I love the theologian and Bishop Tom Wright's commentaries. And his commentary on this particular passage, which I've used in preparation for this Sunday along with others, is brilliant when he examines this clue, this piece of evidence. He points out that when Jesus, just before he raised Lazarus from the dead, said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. When he said that, he went on to raise Lazarus from the dead after they rolled away the stone from the tomb. And he said, Lazarus, come out. And a body wrapped and trapped in bandages tried to stagger out and then the onlookers had to then go and unwrap Lazarus he was bound tightly you see because that's what they did with bodies that had died they waited until the body was decomposed and then they went and collected the bones in what's called an ossuary it's like a storage like a library of bones if you like and then disposed of the bandages the tomb could then of course be reused and the bones stored But Jesus' death and burial was different. His body was wrapped tightly in bandages, embalmed in spices and oils, and then put in a tomb. But what Mary Magdalene finds when she goes to visit the tomb is that the body is gone. Has someone stolen the body? A little while later, Jesus' disciples, as we've heard in the Luke's gospel today, go to the tomb and see his folded graves clothes laid out as if the body had simply disappeared. And we're back to Cluedo again. We need to look at the clues and weigh the evidence. Would someone steal a body but first unwrap it? Now, if you were going to go and steal a body, you know, two of you guys go in, there's a body there, wraps all wrapped up in the tomb, one would get one end, one would get the other, and you'd walk out with it, wouldn't you? All bound up. It's highly unlikely that you would unwrap the body first. Surely, it's much better if you're stealing a body to have it all neatly and tightly wrapped up. But instead, the body of Jesus had gone. But the grave clothes, the bandages, they were still there. This is highly unusual, I think, Every chief inspector would say, highly unusual. His head bandages were more like a turban, just there, sat there, where his head had been. His body bandages were all laid out neatly. It was as if his body had simply imploded and disappeared. It's interesting that uh, archaeologists have found evidence of first century tombs that were sealed up in around AD 70 after the Jews rebelled and were put down by the Romans. These tombs were clearly forgotten. They were maybe the relatives of the folk who'd laid them to rest, concealed the entrances to the tombs so that the Romans couldn't desecrate them, but they died too. And the archaeologists found these tombs perfectly preserved and sealed, but then they found the bodies, they found the grave clothes, but inside they found bones because the bodies had decomposed. And they were laid out. But they were laid out just like the grave clothes in the tomb where Jesus died and is described in the Gospels. 
But in Jesus' case, of course, there was no skeleton. There was no body. And there was no way that his body could simply disappear in three days except, friends, by the miracle of resurrection. When Jesus raised Lazarus, Lazarus returned to his present life, a life that had all the issues, the threats, and ultimately, of course, death to contend with. But Jesus' raising was different. It was resurrection. Lazarus needed someone to untie his bandages and to remove his grave clothes, but Jesus just simply left all his behind altogether. Lazarus came back into a world full of peril, but Jesus had gone through this life beyond death and out into a new life, into a new world, a new creation, a new kingdom, the kingdom of God, where sin and death have been defeated and eternal life with God in all its fullness could begin at last. Folks, this is just one more clue in the case for the miracle of Christ's resurrection. My Cluedo hand is now complete. I know it's true. Jesus did live, die, and rise again on Easter Day. I have the evidence. But what does it mean for you and for me? The big difference to Cluedo is that uh, with Cluedo, the idea is to keep it to yourself. You know, you win the game when you collect the clues and secretly you work those out, you worked out the mystery, and then you declare it to everybody else, don't you? But you hold on to the clues and secretly hold on to the, what, the, what the answer is. But with the evidence of the resurrection, the idea is to go. Go and tell others that they may too share in the good news. This good news is that Jesus is alive. He sat at the right hand of the Father. He's praying for us and the world continually. He has brought us freedom from sin with his own life. And he offers us a new life in relationship with God. That we can enter this relationship, which he calls the kingdom of God. That's just so amazing, isn't it? And we need to go and tell others. Uh, bishop Karen, our local bishop, who has been actually entombed at home with COVID, she sent us all uh, a little, all of her clergy, a, a, a little card um, through email. I don't know if we can get the picture up on the screen, uh, Robin. There we go. It's lovely, isn't it, this? She sent this to all her clergy, this picture and a message, which I feel is particularly relevant to Camford and to Sandra and I at this stage of our ministries. And she said this in part of the message. She says, I've chosen this picture because it sometimes feels that we are standing in the darkness of the tomb, not knowing quite what to do. It is a reminder that the stone has been rolled away, the grave clothes are left lying, and the dawning of a new day awaits. As we reach Easter Day, it is time once again to step out in faith, into the daylight, renewed again to greet the risen Lord, as if for the first time, waiting for eyes to adjust to the new vision before us and our ears to respond to the call to go. Friends, we have a precious gift, the gospel, you know, or good news to translate it, not just of sins forgiven, but life everlasting. This is good. This is just too good to keep to ourselves. Even though we've got it in our hand, the evidence there, we don't just hold it on to ourselves. We are there to step out, to go and proclaim it out in the sunlight with all our friends and family and workmates and all the people that we meet. We're there to share this great news. This Easter day, let us go out with that message in our hearts and on our lips to share the good news with others. And let's take up our orders of service now to step out in faith into the daylight once again, renewed again, to greet the risen Lord and not to keep the message of the gospel to ourselves, but to respond to the call to go and share it with all. Amen. Amen.
now to declare our faith in the words of this short creed. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. So I invite Nikki and Richard, who are going to share prayer, lead us in prayers this morning. Let us pray. We will begin with a prayer of Brother Roger of Tese. If you were not risen, Lord Christ, to whom would we go to discover the radiance of the face of God? If you were not risen, we would not be together seeking your communion. We would not find in your presence forgiveness, wellspring of a new beginning. If you were not risen, where would we draw the energy for following you right to the end of our existence for choosing you again and anew? Lord, we rejoice that we are part of your worldwide church and that today and in the weeks to come, your people will be celebrating your rising from the dead We pray for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for their faith and ask that they may be strengthened to stand firm. May they be encouraged by your presence and by the love of other Christians. We pray for our Queen that she may be sustained as she seeks to serve you and her people. Please guide our government that they may seek justice and the good of all. We thank you for our Archbishop Justin Welby. Please give him strength, wisdom and courage daily as he seeks to lead our church. We commit to our bishops and our own clergy, Chris and Sandra, Mike, Karen and Peter Myers, soon to join the Church of St Barnabas in Bearwood. Please fill them with your peace, joy and hope this Easter. We commit to you Chris and Sandra as they prepare for their retirement. We thank you for bringing them to us and for their dedicated and loving service over the years. Be close to them during this time of transition and encourage their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for the beauty of creation and the miracle of new life. We rejoice as we see all that you have made. Forgive us for the damage that we as human beings are doing to our world and help us to be better stewards of all that you have entrusted to us. We pray for an end to conflict and lift up before you the people of the Ukraine, the Yemen, Afghanistan, Syria, Ethiopia and other countries in the world where there is warfare and oppression. 
Let us hold before God in a moment of silence all those who are suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we commit to you our own community and pray for all those in any kind of need. We thank you for our NHS and social services and pray that you will encourage and strengthen those who work to bring care and healing to others. We remember before you the bereaved, the sick, the sad and the lonely. We pray for the families of Diana Douglas, Barbara Myers and Wendy Wadsworth. We pray especially for Sandra Webster and ask that your comfort and healing power will be upon her. Let us also remember silently before God others who need our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We'll now end with a prayer of William Temple. Lord Jesus Christ, who prayed for your disciples that they might be one, even as you are one with the Father, draw us to yourself, that in common love and obedience to you we may be united to one another, that the world may believe that you are Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And they were glad when they saw it was the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Without uh, endangering one another, please turn around and uh, greet one another with uh, a wave or kiss of peace. going to have our, our offer, offer tree hymn now uh, which is how great the chasm and for all those who are at home uh, watching on live stream uh, you, you're very very welcome to join in with communion please uh, during perhaps during this hymn if you haven't already done so go and get uh, a piece of bread and some wine because we would love to uh, to share with you this uh, special easter day communion How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the dark your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living Who could imagine
imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory to where my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever jesus christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Why is it right to give thanks and praise? Listen and we will hear. Lord of all life, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You give us happy times and things to celebrate. And in these we taste your kingdom a feast for all your children. You made us all, each wonderfully different, to join with the angels and sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So we thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us, Christ's body and his blood. Why do we share this bread and wine? Listen and we will hear that on the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. 
He gave thanks, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Then after they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And so, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, and his risen life. And as you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Christ, Jesus Christ, our Savior. So how do we follow Jesus Christ? Listen and we will hear. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered into your loving arms. And now, with all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit, today and forever. Amen. Please sit or kneel for the Lord's Prayer. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! So I'm going to get Sandra to hold the uh, cup. If you'd like to come forward. Is, is there anybody who'd rather remain in their seat to receive communion? If you'd like to raise a hand now. Okay. Otherwise, do come up. Stand on the cross. We'll drop the bread and uh, dip in some wine. And then if you go back round the back of the altar, back through the archway and back to your seat that way that would be wonderful that keep everybody safe so
we had some uh, words before the service. Sandra very beautifully wrote out so I could read it. Wouldn't have been quite the same if I'd written them out for her. <laughs> so this was in our pre-service prayers. First word is a sense of the word heaviness and desire to be set free and released. Well, that's a good one for Easter Day, isn't it? So that's you. We'd love to pray with you after the service. Then some words from Psalm 65. We find refuge in the Lord, a word of encouragement. And then if we lift up our eyes, we will see the glory of the Lord. Lift above the, the world. The, lift. Uh, let me down here, Sandra. <laughs> Your normal copper plate writing has just failed me a little bit. So lift, lift above, above the world's clanging and noise. noise and he, he will, will hear us. us. I should have worked yeah. that out, shouldn't I, really? <laughs> Never mind. We just wanted to hear your lovely voice. Okay. <laughs> so over to you for the post-communion prayer. Okay, so let us pray together the prayer on the back of the service sheet as we give thanks. Almighty God, we thank, we thank you, you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And before we have our final prayer of blessing, we have got a wonderful uh, song to sing, so I invite Stephen out. Uh, Thine be the glory, so let's stand and worship.
Father, may God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith. And may God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those whom you love and all those whom you pray for this day and forever. Amen. Amen. So a few words of thanks. First, say a huge thank you to Robin for standing in on the laptop over there. Yeah. And <laughs> thank you um, to Stephen and Steve for leading us um, in worship. I want to say a huge thank you for the beautiful flowers in church. What a delight to walk in and see the flowers here. And to all who have served today, a huge thank you to you. And finally, a huge thank you to all of you for coming and for joining us online. Um, there's coffee and tea in the CMC. I Do join there us. Is, yes. is there an Easter egg hunt or not, or have they all been found after breakfast? I think they've all been found by nine. breakfast at Niners, but there we are. I'm not sure. What do you think, Sharon? Well, if anybody wants to do the Easter trail. Well, there we are. Great. There may be one or two. Sharon has done a left. wonderful Easter trail for around the church. So if you'd like to do that, you can grab a cup of coffee and then perhaps go for a little yep. walk and find out. And you might even get an Easter egg at the end of it. There we are. <laughs> if there are any left, that is. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to finish with that wonderful acclamation. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.